What it is, what it is, you see Cruise, your boys, Eddie Chunk Chunk, and we are back again Wait with another banger for you guys today. What kind of bang it is? It's a muck bang. bang. Today I have Nate, and today we're doing some Chicago style food. This is from a veteran uh, food truck pop up guy, and I'm assuming he's Chicago style because he got Chicago hot dogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. he got mild barbecue wings, and isn't that like an Illinois style or, or is it not sour dogs? It's a Polis, but yeah. I see you low key seasoning that, or he, he did that. No, he did that. He seasoned that. I didn't put oh, nothing okay. on that. Okay. Yeah. And then also they he did he sports some seasoning on the wings too. I okay. saw. Okay. Okay. But uh, we were a actually able to get this all for free. I guess the next guy that came up paid for the next four orders. So that was a, a blessing in disguise. And at first I was confused because your guy was like, uh, "Yeah, the next guy came up. He's paying for the next four orders." Well, I'm like, "Man, shucks," because I you already missed went. it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But then I checked my card was never charged. So which right. is confusing because I put my card in. I don't know, but he may probably because it did say hand, now hand back the terminal thing to him. Oh, and maybe when I hand it back to him, he never he probably canceled it out. I don't know, but my card, my Chase card has it where if, if yeah, twenty five cents and up. I, I see the charge. So uh, let's go ahead and get a prayer. Father God, I want to thank you for this food that I'm about to receive in our body, and I ask that you do please bless this food in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. Amen. Let's eat. I'm ready to go. I'm hungry. I got the mild barbecue wings with some jerk sauce on the side. Okay. We got some fries in the back, and then I got a Chicago down. You got a sauerkraut. Okay. Polish. I got the Polish traditional with mm -hmm. the with the mustard and the sauerkraut. No ketchup. About to see what it's doing. And this looks real good too. The onions, the tomatoes, mm. the jalapenos, the relish. Mmm. That's good. That's a real Polish. Mmm. <clears throat> got a little spice to it too. Mm -hmm. Yours too? Yeah, I almost had some spice with it on one yeah, he, hit it with, he, he hit it with the spice. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Red pepper flakes. I see the red pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. mm. oh, this is a hot polish. Mm. This, is, that, this is good. Hot polish, where is that? Honestly, um, mm. It looks like something he loved doing too. He looked like he was real happy. Mm-hmm. Like he was making a food. Good customer service and everything. Yeah, he was a vet. Mm-hmm. Veteran. <laughs> and my dad was wearing an army shirt. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm. God was like thinking about so myself. So crazy. How often do you get that? If I wear that shirt? Mm hmm Okay, first off. You gotta tell him the story about the shirts. So the story about the shirts, I used to work at a at a a job and next door was a um a recruiting office and they gave me like a box of shirts they're gonna throw away they said hey would you like them literally it's like 50 army shirt like go army shirts and stuff of that sort but then like i had so many i gave some to my dad i had some gave some to nicole like anybody who wanted some shirts you know i had it was green and blacks so yeah now dad has them he wears it's really just like a workout shirt it really is like a workout shirt mm -hmm. but so anyway it's a real comfortable shirt mm -hmm. you know sort of fitting so I had it on this morning, and um, we went out to this, this, you know, to the veteran spot, and um, I was like, we pulled up. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I got this shirt on. Yeah. I hope you don't ask me about this shirt because mm -hmm. it kind of make you feel like you're a fraud or something. Like you got on a shirt that says U.S. Army on the on the top, mm -hmm. and you're going up to a veteran stand. So he was like, he was like, yeah, thank you for your service. And I was like, man, it's just a shirt. It's just a shirt. But he didn't hear me. Yeah, he was like, right on. He didn't right hear on. me. He was like, right on. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. What is going on? So he was just making it seem or like he didn't hear what Dad was saying. So he thought he was just agreeing with him. Like, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now this guy, nigga, I, I served. And and then I told my dad, oh, they gave us the food for free. And he was like, <laughs> I hope he didn't do it because he thought you were a vet. <laughs> right. I'm like, nah, some guy paid for it. But, nah, it's definitely good food, though. What I was gonna say is, um, I've done a video with you in a long time. Been a minute. Probably not, not probably. It's been years since we've yeah, it's definitely um, been a minute. Done a video. What's been going on with you, man? What's the update? Well, I know you do videos on my channel, but not too much either. Mostly when I need to do a sauce update or something. When's like the that? last time you done a video on Dairy Channel? Years. So you haven't been on the kids' yeah. channel in years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do videos like that, y'all. When this man in the house is being rebooted. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never, ever, ever. <laughs> There's been times where I'd be like, oh, maybe I should put something up there. Mm -mm. 
Mm. Nah, it ain't happening, y'all. But what's been going on with you? Steady working. Trying mm -hmm. to get the uh the sauce launch. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um working on building that inventory, working on the sauce recipe in the jar, you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm Stuff like that, getting um uh, getting ready for the the store launch. Mm. Okay. That's really the biggest goals for 24 is this getting getting the product closer to the customer. Because, mm. you know, like, like, like say for holiday times where it's like you want it mm -hmm. and you got to wait two, three days. But when the holidays come, that shipping, if it's if it's post office or whatever, you don't know when it's going to get there. Mm -hmm. It tells you two to three days, but. But delays and postal service and stuff like that, you don't know. So yeah, if you had to go, if you got to go to the store and grab it, yeah, it's there. That's what I'm trying to do is get it closer to customers. Yeah, I feel it. You know, I'm working real close mm -hmm. trying to get this done. What I was gonna say is, how's it like working uh, with your wife? Obviously, my mom. Mm -hmm. But how's it like? Do you think? Uh, Cause I know, like sometimes, if you're around your significant other all the time, it can be hectic. Mm -hmm. Like it's nice to have two separate, two separate things where she does her thing or her work, and you do your thing, you're working. You guys are separate for eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's hectic now working with each other twenty four? Mm mm. Only because we've been doing it forever, though. Mm hmm. You know. Well, yeah. Since the business. When we met each other, when we met each other, we worked at the same place. That's how we met. Oh, mm -hmm. That was three years. Left there. Then we were, you know, we were living off the severance, unemployed, because Motorola left and went to Texas. Mm -hmm. And then after that, jumped into business together with the daycares, did that. And then were they offering, offering packages for people to move to Texas or nah? Yeah, they were. They were doing reload. They were they was relocating. Uh -huh. But you know, I was so young, man. Yeah. I don't know. I ain't gonna use, go that far. You so, how old were you when you two met? That was like 19. 19? Yeah, I was 19. You think y'all get married at 19? Mm mm. Got married at 20. Mm hmm. Got married so, how at long 20. were y'all dating before y'all got married? Nine months. Two. Uh, when you know, you know. The thing is, is um, you hear so many times people say, well, I don't want to rush anything. I don't want to rush in a relationship. But I feel like because people are so strict on putting a time limit on rushing into one. But also, I feel like you're putting a time limit when you're saying, oh, we have to be dating for this certain amount of time for us to, like, get serious or get married right, or whatever. Right, right. Should, you should, if, if you're feeling each other, you're feeling each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think there should be a time limit. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think there's a vetting period. Mm -hmm. Right? So the difference is... Um, if your relationship is nothing but physical in the beginning mm -hmm. and you're not really taking the time to get to know each other and all that stuff, it could go on for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if you're not physical in the beginning and you're doing nothing but taking the time to get to know each other at a, at a, at a root level, you know what I'm saying? And really mm -hmm. like understanding how you came up, family values, mm -hmm. you know, your, you know, how you are spiritually, how you want to raise your kids, what's your finances like, all the kind of detail stuff that that people should know about each other before they get married yeah if you do that there ain't really no time limit on it i know a couple that they like they've been married they're going on a 45th um they just they just um celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary talked to them they were like oh yeah we got married in six months mm. met each other um got married in six months they've been married 45 years Honestly, that's, and I feel like that's more actually your generation thing, too, where people got together and they stayed together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's the difference because the difference in dating back then compared uh, to this year? Or? Yeah, I think I think it's a difference in the mindset of what marriage is. Mm -hmm. And also just the fortitude. People were like, marriage is for life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like. Marriage is good until it's not, and then yeah. I'm out. <laughs> that's yeah. how people be. Well, that's I feel how like people, people are trying to normalize too. Um, leaving if it's uh, I don't know. People are looking at marriages like you can just break up, right? 
Like, and, I, and, I, and honestly, I was uh, been talking, I was talking to someone the other day, I'm like, man, this is going to be obsolete soon. I'm like, I was just asking you, when's the last time you've been to a wedding? Nah, it's been a minute. It's been actually like 15, 20 years, maybe. Mm hmm. That's been, that's been a minute since I've been in a wedding. You know, no one, no one's getting married, and I don't even have friends that are saying like, "Oh yeah, I mentioned this marriage or this mar wedding." Like right, Nicole, she's going to a wedding for her cousin. Mm -hmm. This is her first year wedding since she was a, a child. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I just feel dating. See, you're lucky. I feel like you're in a generation where dating was nice, simple, and easy. Now with social uh, media, you, you yeah. thought, you, well, let it me ask you this. Different. Cause so let me ask you this in your time of dating. Cause like right now I'm looking back in my time of dating is like mm -hmm. your generation had it easy, but in your time when you're dating, do you think oh the old generation had it easy? I have it hard now. Mm -hmm. in my or do you think it was still good? Yeah, I think I think my generation had it easy, easier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than older generations. I think it was worse than the older generations. Too many expect it was a lot of expectations, and um, it was. I wouldn't say it was not as much uh, exploration because you know people did stuff. Mm -hmm. But is that box? Do you want to give me that open pit over there? My fault. But um, I think in my day it was mm -hmm. it was personal. Like in like right now, I don't know how y'all do these apps, man. Like because mm -hmm. you not you not really like interacting with a person. You are, but you're on the other end of a of an app. Yeah. And communication is very different in person than it is. On an app, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the other part about it is like, okay, say you meet somebody in my day, you go out to a party, you go out to a game, you know what I'm saying? You do something, that's how you meet people. Yeah. And so, um, by virtue of the fact that you met them there, yeah. that's usually what their lifestyle is like. They go out, they go to parties, they go out to, you know, um, you know, games and stuff like that. So you know what they are kind of like. Mm -hmm. When you're on an app and you meet somebody on an app, you expect that they probably still on the app mm -hmm. after they met you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's just a little different. Like, I don't know. You know, you might you might go to clubs together. Yeah. Whereas now it's you on the app, and I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know. And honestly, um, in this generation too, what I was gonna say is um, dating, not was not dating, but oh, because your generation, you guys. How to approach each other to get to know someone because right. there was no social media. There's right. so you have personal. One. Honestly, I've run I've run into a lot of women who say they don't like being approached. Really? Yeah. Like, like, at all. like don't like being approached at all. I, I, Which, how are you gonna meet somebody? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what? I have to talk to you through social media. That's social weird. Media. And it's actually common. That's not like an anomaly. It's like some women just don't like being approached. You know. That's the reason why. Didn't you say was my wearing a ring? Yeah, she was wearing a ring. So how did you go about that? I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't. So this is what happened, and um, it was just kind of like a happenstance. So first off, we weren't, we didn't work in the same factory at Motorola. Motorola was huge. Mm -hmm. It was like 1.4 million square feet or something like that. So we didn't work in the same factory. Um, I ended up working in overtime in the factory that I worked in. She was in. She ended up volunteering for overtime in that same factory that I always worked in. Mm -hmm. And then you know we was on break. Came back from break, me and my buddy Craig, we standing on the wall, um, and then she she walked in uh, from from break. I saw her, you know, both Craig and I were like, oh yeah, it was nice looking, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, went to her lines, and our lines was across each other, so she was on this line, and I was on the line behind her, mm -hmm. and we was really just doing our thing, you know, Craig, you know how guys are, we talking, we looking, mm -hmm. talking, and stuff like that. Craig had a girlfriend already, so you know, but we didn't think that nothing because I saw a ring on her finger, so I mm -hmm. thought. I thought for sure, like she married and yeah. whatnot. And I'm like, I don't, I don't approach married women. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, long story short, you know, we just happened to start talking on break. Mm -hmm. She came over and we just started chatting and and I asked her for her number and then we was, and then from there, you know, just to kind of break down that whole nine month thing, mm -hmm. man. From there, because she lived in uh, Chicago and I lived in Rockford. Mm -hmm. We spent so much time on the phone. I'm talking about, you know, one of them. You know how you meet somebody and you're on the phone till you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like every night on the phone till you fall asleep, mm -hmm. literally. And and we talked about everything. There was nothing that she didn't know about me and I didn't know about her. Yeah. In terms of all of our upbringing, our parents, you mm -hmm. know, the whole situation, and you know, you know, <laughs> families can be messy. Yeah. 
So I knew all of the stuff in her family. She knew all the stuff in my family. And yeah. it just it just really clicked. Mm. It really clicked. Yeah. And um that's kind of, so how far was Mar Motorola from mom and and you? So Motorola for me was only like 45, 50 minutes. Mm. But from your mom, mm. man, it was crazy. Cause she okay, first off. She was working in Vernon Hills, mm -hmm. which is much closer to her. They moved Vernon Hills plant to Harvard. Mm -hmm. And then that means she was driving like an hour and a half. But it ended up being like two hours because she was carpooling. Mm -hmm. So she was going and picking up everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. But that's how she did it. And um, if she wasn't doing that, we would have never met. I ain't going to lie, though. At your age, if I was 19, though, I wouldn't be paying attention I feel like now is the age where I'm starting to pay attention to wedding rings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt 19. I wasn't. I wasn't looking at wedding like see oh, if a person yeah. was married. If a woman had a ring on it, it's like because I wasn't like looking for extremely older, you know. Right, right. So if a woman had a ring on her finger, they all was just style. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I think for me, I was already sort of geared toward that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was. I, I wasn't. Um, I guess I was already geared toward wanting to. Um, be married at a young age because mm -hmm. I already, you know, my parents have been married for, I don't know, lots of years, yeah. 40 some years. And so I was already geared to that. I wanted that lifestyle. Yeah. Married kids. So I wasn't like just dating to be dating. Yeah. Um, plus, I had, I had been in a, in other serious relationships, you know, where, where we were like talking. About, and yeah, I'm, I'm 19, but at the time I was a mature 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 19. I had I had my degree already. I had a three bedroom apartment. You know, I, I just was I always been that way. So uh so that's kind of why I was always like, okay, when I seen her, I was looking for the ring. Cause man, you don't want to be talking to somebody and you you spending all this time, especially if you're going out and you're spending mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. you don't want to find out that they oh, married. Yeah. You know but I'm, I'm assuming saying? they'll say something right away. Man. <laughs> you assume. <laughs> you assume. <laughs> But what I was gonna say though too, so with with getting married at what twenty you said, right? Yep, twenty. So, but you're pretty much tied down since nineteen. I, I this may be. I, then uh, don't feel. I, I want your honest answer on this. Okay, okay. Do you wish you would explore dating a little bit more, like lived your life a little bit more, um, or are you happy like, oh, I'm glad you know I, you? Because I feel like getting married at that before twenty one, like you even mm -hmm. experienced the clubs yet. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I know, but see, that I think I think for other people, yeah, that might be a huge thing. For me, it wasn't in my personality. I wasn't a clubber mm -hmm. type of person like that at all. I never even wanted to be in a club, um, and I wasn't really a party goer at all. I was really like a you know a straight shooter. So in terms of like, do I regret it? No, I feel like I had plenty of opportunities. <laughs> I feel like I had plenty mm -hmm. of opportunities on the dating scene. Mm -hmm. um, I dated enough. Mm -hmm. You know, even through, you know, before, even after high school, I had enough dates that I, mm -hmm. I knew where I wanted to be and I didn't want to be in that life where you just dating and doing this stuff over and over. This yeah. is a cycle. Mm -hmm. It's literally a cycle. It's like you get into a date, you dating this person three months, five months, six months, a year, whatever, and then you off and then you yeah. off the cycle and you, and literally off the cycle, you, you just get back to who you were. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. You get back on the train and you do it all over again. It's just, Let me ask you this. How, what was, uh, how long were you single before you met mom? Like, were you fresh off relationship? Were you single for a no, while? No, I think I was single oh. for about, I was single for about six months, I think. Mm. Yeah, Did, I were, you, were you heartbroken off that last year? No, nah, I wasn't. Have you had, had no, I wasn't even a relationship like that. Have you know? had any heartbreaks for mom? Oh, yeah. Were you? Oh, yeah. For, like, you know. like grown adult relationships or not? Like, mm, nah, uh, no, not, not really. Like 14 nah, or something? No, nah, no. Nah. No, nah, I would say, I say I probably had one heartbreak. You know, mm. you, you need a first yeah. or whatever. But, mm. but other than that, it's like... With your first heartbreak, did you think like, oh, this woman was potentially gonna be my wife when you were no, at the time? I was too young. I was too young. Oh, okay. okay. I was too young, and you know, I think, I think too, like heartbreak gets. Uh, I don't think heartbreak gets easier, but heartbreak heartbreak gets more manageable. I think you know, mm -hmm. after you, you had your heart broken first time, you're like, okay, I know what this feels like. This ain't the end of the world. It's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't feel nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And how, what's the age difference between your mom? Three, three, three years. Yeah. Right. So she was she was, she was twenty one then. She was able to go to the club. She experienced the club. She I don't she know. If she experienced. I don't think she was a clubber like that. She was a house party. Yeah. I'm not maybe not necessarily. I, I think she has been to. She did go to clubs in Chicago, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, up to like three years. Three years. Oh, like I don't that. know why I thought it was way dip more. Like mm-hmm. it was like four to five. Nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. How do you? What do you think about dating an older woman though? Well, I don't, you know, well, I don't during that I don't, time, did you look at it any? I always wanted. I always dated an older woman. I, I wouldn't say I always dated yeah. older women, mm-hmm. but my preference has always been for more mature women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think, and I think that reason why is because even at 19, I didn't conduct myself as a as a 19 year old. Like you know what I mean, like I said, I'm I'm 19, mm-hmm. but I'm a 19 year old with a three bedroom apartment, a vehicle. Uh, a degree and a good job making good money yeah. at 19 yeah. so it just was a different it was a different scenario you know what i'm saying like like some people say well would i have gotten married had i been like a typical 18 19 year old with nothing yeah that might be a different scenario for me like honestly and it probably would have been a different scenario for her too it's like mm-hmm. no woman wants to like get get married to a man and he ain't got nothing yeah still living at home mm-hmm. with his parents and stuff like that so i think I think because of all the things that I already had in place, it made thinking about marriage easier. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't like, because most men, I think, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I think most men ain't trying to get married and they can't provide for the for yeah. the woman. You know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be pointless, or even have children. Okay, so now, okay, now think about this though, and I want your honest answer on this one. So now, when she when when she said, "Oh, I have a kid," was it like a a red flag that were you like, oh snap, I don't know. Like was it did you have to think about it? Like were you telling your friends, like, man, yeah, she has a kid, like what do you think? You know? Yeah, I think I think honestly, <laughs> Be honest. I think I was crazy. Why? Because I don't think I responded like I should have responded. Mm-hmm. You know, like the normal response would have been like, Okay, you got a kid, let me think about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was more like, mm, cause we had had so many conversations, I knew that she had a kid right up front, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I knew that in the conversation, but we hadn't met, you know uh, what I'm saying? But okay. I knew I knew from day one, like she had a kid okay. and all. So I knew everything. Um, the whole story, backstory, everything, I knew it all. So it was like I was familiar with it, but mm. I did not know what it was going to mean to be a father. Mm. And you know, so making that decision, I made that decision on intellect and not like experience at mm-hmm. all you know yeah. what i'm saying so i'm basically saying okay i love you and by virtue of the fact that i love you i'm gonna love him mm-hmm. right just mm-hmm. just on that i was like just on that but then when when it all came together she moved and, and all this stuff then i experienced what it was like it was a lot of pressure mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. it literally was a lot of pressure like you know it wasn't it wasn't a lot of financial pressure in terms mm-hmm. of like okay we had to get you bedroom set up and all this stuff that stuff was the fun part mm-hmm. getting you set up but it was like I'm I'm now 20. I'm a 20 year old kid basically, and now I'm responsible for disciplining uh, a young man, a little mm-hmm. kid. You know what I'm saying for raising a young kid, and I didn't understand the the enormity of that challenge. Were you shy to discipline time. me at first? Like where? Yeah, you? because mm-hmm. I, she she set really good expectations. Mm-hmm. So she's always been really good about. Um, us having a conversation about the expectation of okay so we never had an issue where um she was like no i don't want you disciplining my son no mm-hmm. she gave me free reign and was like pushing me to do it like do 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 you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so she was always in that way but for me yeah it was like well i've never done this before mm-hmm. you know how lenient do you be how far do you take it you know what i'm saying how it was a lot man it was a lot to learn in a very short period of time and um I think I learned a lot really when I got, you know, got saved and got started going to church. I learned a lot about um, how to be a good man. Mm-hmm. And that's that's helped me to try to figure out, you know, how to be a good father. And, and for anybody that is in that situation, when you're just coming into it and you don't get a chance to start from scratch, like you behind the curve. So mm-hmm. it really does take some time for you to, number one, bond. Yeah, because the bonding is super, super important with a kid. If you haven't learned how to get that, if you haven't gotten that bond, yeah. it makes everything else more hard, difficult. So, mm-hmm. I think it just took me some time, man. It took me some time. It was a very difficult decision, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said no. I did think about it, but mm-hmm. I thought about it in a very emotionally immature way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just like, oh yeah, well this is what it's gonna be like. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Like you think you know everything. 
Mm-hmm. But when you start experiencing it, it's like, oh, wait, whoa. How was your mom reacting to you dating a woman with a kid at first? My, my mom loved mm-hmm. and loves Bethany. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even they, from the get go, like when, when you first said, uh, told your mom about her, like before she met her, what was her thought process? Like, okay. Um, I don't know if I had a you know, sit down mm-hmm. convo where I was like, hey, mom, here she is. She got a child. I wasn't in the habit of bringing girlfriends home at all. Yeah. Zero. Like, I uh-huh. think most men don't like. Yeah. bring a woman home at all unless like they way further down the line and they know they're serious so yeah. uh my mom's literally let met like met met maybe two mm-hmm. women that i've dated literally mm-hmm. like met met and she loved bassinet she's from day one she loved her um they just got along really good yeah i don't know really 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 good it's like because they're both short scary though I think she was connected because they're both. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, I listen. Listen, shoot, it was so she. They got along so good. I thought I was being replaced. Yeah, that was that was a little concerning to me. Yeah, how, how did Grandpa react? I feel like he has no emotion. Yeah, no, yeah, no <laughs> he was like, well, hey, he nice say nothing. Uh-huh. Yep, that's pretty much it. Oh hey, hi, how you doing? Yeah, you know <laughs> Grandpa he always say been like that. I never seen him with emotion. He's yeah, so he plain. Just, he very laid back. You know. Just go with the flow. And the kind. most, honestly, I don't think about. I never seen him full laugh. I see him like smirk laugh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. But now like a <laughs> like teeth showing everything. Yeah, I have. I yeah, have, yeah, but I, the I, thing yeah, is, the yeah. fact that you had to think about that, you grew up with him. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't see it a lot growing yeah. up at all. I've seen it more as an adult than I ever did it as, yeah. as a child. No, I didn't see a lot. I see him smirk laugh. That's the yeah. most laugh I got. Yeah, he, he laughs. He, I've seen him laugh really <laughs> hard before. But yeah, I seen it more as an adult. It's funny how like mm. it's just funny how relationships change. Mm. You know, it changes when you when you're a child. Uh, your relationship with your parent. Uh, it's so different than when you get to be an adult. Your yeah. relationship is so so. You talk about different things. You understand each other on mm-hmm. a whole different level. It's like a whole new experience with your parent that you didn't get when you were a child because yeah. you were really just being mentored and uh-huh. groomed. Well, I think they because kind of, they're probably now they're looking at you as an adult now, right? Not as someone I got to teach you and train you and exactly. Stuff of that sort. Now we're looking at you, okay? You're grown and stuff of that sort. Yeah. It's like that grandparent syndrome. It's like it's like. When when you are the parent and you have to teach your children, it's like it's mm-hmm. you own it because you can't let them slack and stuff like that. But when you're the grandparent, mm-hmm. chilling. Yeah, they come over. Uh, how many suckers do you want? Mm-hmm. Yes, here you go. You sugar them all up because we know we're giving them back to you. Give them everything they want. Spoil them. Give them right back to the parents. Yeah. See, you're not doing that to your kids though. Yeah. You shouldn't. Yeah, true. <laughs> now, what? Now, when you had when this is one of the last questions too. When you had uh, your second Darius second kid, mm-hmm. were you thinking like, oh, this is about to be easy because I already have uh, I, well, well, I already have well, I was raising one, or was it like the whole different thing because now this is actually well, I know you looked at me as always as yours, but it's like mm-hmm. now I'm making my own blood one. Mm-hmm. Like, how I never was, thought about the whole blood thing. Uh-huh. Um, you know, blood, not blood. I think the easier part was the bonding. Because mm-hmm. remember, like, you we were, you know, I had to learn the bond with you. Whereas when you have a baby, it's like an instant bond. Yeah. Unless you go through postpartum, but that's, that's like a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, it's like an instant bond. So that's the that's probably the biggest difference between um, the bonding process between um the the child of the woman that you marry versus the child that you have that this mm-hmm. that this that instant bond versus like the growing bond yeah but i think the other part of it is the difference was this financial strain mm. like that second child man yeah. like it's mm. that's the baby's are expensive care. bro yeah, it's, baby's are expensive man like i think that's what i think that's what like the most important uh the most imp- impactful thing was is like mm-hmm. now we got a baby Back then, um, we found out he was like lactose intolerant, so he had to be on like ISO meal. Oh wow! And we was already like the the regular milk was like nineteen dollars. The ISO meal back then was like twenty three to twenty six dollars a little can, and he was going through that stuff like every two days. And I, and I was just like, man, that the diapers mm. like. People think, okay, so people think child support, like if you you in a situation where you're not with your child and you have to pay child support, man, that little money you giving away, that ain't nothing. Oh, you don't it's a, well, you know, <laughs> if you're a celebrity or, you know what I'm saying, yeah, it's a lot. But like, if you don't make a lot of money and you have to give 17%, your 17% comes out to like 
a couple hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, that's not gonna cut it. Yeah. I'm telling you, between the between the diapers, the milk, the clothing that they grow out of, like that, and then as you progress, the other stuff that you got to deal with daycare and all that stuff. This stuff, babies are expensive. Yeah. So I think just. That was probably the biggest thing is just the finances of that really, especially the first years. Yeah. It was tough. Cause so that's one of the reasons going back to school. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the reason for moving to Wisconsin. Really, 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 I decided to go back to school when um, when she came and moved in and you moved in. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do something better than this. Yeah. Because I was established for a 19-year-old kid. Yeah. But you, I got a whole family now. Mm. So I had to go back to school, get my bachelor's degree. And then, you know, obviously at each time going back to school, it was because I wanted to make a better life for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's very chill. But that was it. I think, especially my generation, especially, well, not even my generation with how old I'm getting. It's gonna be rare for me to run into a woman with no kids. The older you are, yeah. <clears throat> and then too, like Beth and I say this all the time. Like we be watching these shows, and then you know it's always like thirty somethings, and then you get into the forty somethings, and they date them. Like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> you forty and single for a reason. Yeah. At right. some point, mm -hmm. like there's some. It's not necessarily just baggage, mm -hmm. you know, because I think sometimes baggage. You know, sometimes people see baggage as like three kids or you know things like that like mm -hmm. but there's a lot of emotional trauma that once you got into 40 and you've been through a lot of relationships and then none of them worked out you don't really know whether it's your fault they didn't work out or mm -hmm. they fault they didn't work out you just know they don't work out man these people are damaged well, let me ask you this though this is gonna be a controversial answer though okay. but don't you uh because you're what is that the same for a man and a woman though because a man that's 40 years old is single is it, is, do you believe that's because he's a problem? Because I feel like men, we, women are the ones who want the relationship is what I feel. Yeah. You know, men, we just, uh, I mean, if we are, if we're in one, we're in one. If we're not, we're 100% okay with, with that. You know, women yeah. are like to connect and bond more than men. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And I do think, I do think that, I think it kind of depends on the man, mm -hmm. but I think for sure, like, if you're a woman and you've been through and you're 40 something and you um, have desired to be married and are not, but you have multiple long term relationships and they didn't just work, they didn't work out. Mm -hmm. That's that's grounds mm -hmm. for like questions. There's yeah. some red flags there because mm -hmm. a man who's going to be in a relationship, a long term relationship with you, they're trying to wife you. Yeah. Listen, and I, I don't want to interrupt you, but literally I was on Tinder. I saw not too long ago, a woman said, oh, I have five, I'm single, five kids. I'm stubborn. She literally, this is in her bio. This is what I go through in dating. She's like, I'm single. I have five kids. I'm stubborn and hard headed. You need to, uh, you need to come with that pressure. Have your own this, like be mature. Have the, I'm like you have five kids. Like, about to be and the thing is, there's nothing wrong with it's having, there's nothing wrong with having standards and stuff, but also you can't be put, especially, I just really, what threw me off is when she said, I'm stubborn. I'm like, you just like you you can't you, lost, you already you have lost, she lost you, that <laughs> you already lost. have some negatives to you too many negatives where it's like and then how many kids are how many people how many dads are with those five kids you know that's a big deal now that's also deal. but what is understandable if you had one man and you guys were married for a while and then had five kids it, i mean it's yeah still, that's understandable it's still a dot for a guy because like man five kids but you know but one dad is like okay that's an understandable thing but i yeah, think, I think but that's a just people thing. putting hard-headed or stubborn inside their bio i'm like well that's not an attractive trait if because if a guy does that a woman like if i told you oh i'm stubborn i'm not i'm yeah. not willing to compromise or something well i'm like swipe left i don't right think it's now. the best thing to do <laughs> i don't think it's the best thing to do for your dating life yeah. for your you know but i think at the same time what they're really saying to you um but they're not putting in there is i'm truthful if you're willing to nah, say what you're saying to, about yourself, I think that's twisting it to be a positive, though. I am, <laughs> I am. But you gotta look at it like this. Listen, if you gonna tell me, uh, no, nah, I'm not saying I'm clicking on her and yeah. saying I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah. I'm just saying, well, at least she honest. Yeah. Swipe whatever direction yeah, swipe that left, you know. Left, I don't know what the direction yeah. it is, but <laughs> swipe whatever direction. I'm not going for it, but at least she honest. Nah, but I feel like if a woman tells you she's stubborn or she tells you she's spoiled, spoiled is a big one. Yeah. She tells you she's spoiled. Mm. What did they say? Run. Mm. Run. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, 
it's, it's well, so many the thing is, I'm not trying to buy your love. Right, I feel so like a lot of women want their love yeah. bought nowadays. And it's like, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for real love or relationship. Man, that's like these. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you see? The, I, thought, I don't know if it was on Instagram or TikTok. I saw this um, this lady. It went viral, too. This lady in the car with her date. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was for real or not, but it was, he pulled up to like Cheesecake Factory. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> the Indian like, guy. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you doing too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about if you if you a man and you ain't trying to. Cut my steak and yeah. chew it for me. I'm like, what is oh, you, that baby? Crazy. Chew it well, she didn't crazy. say chew it. Well, she was like, you, you gonna, you gonna take me to the restaurant, yeah. and open the door for me, yeah. and pull out the chair. But also, if the, I order a steak, cut my steak. I'm the, like, the back story too is he was he had a point. He had reservations for a, a high end restaurant. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, but then he would he waited outside her house for an hour for her to come down. Oh wow, or 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, I didn't. Even so know he that was like, well, we missed our reservations, so now let's go to cheesecake. And she should have been down yeah, for that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, that's she should have been down for that, even if Cheesecake Factory was the first location. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because yeah. I mean, because I think it just says a lot about you mm -hmm. if you if you respond to the situation like that. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's never gonna be a second yeah. date. And this also, over. You, you should be able to read the room. And I don't feel like he was yeah. a guy who was looking to. Based it off didn't seem like he was. He's like looking to just sleep with you. You know, he's yeah. actually probably interested in, in things of that sort. You, I think she messed up on a good. The guy. whole thing is okay. I'm thinking that this is fake. Yeah. Because you, why are you filming? Yeah. Why are you filming the? Well, thing? I don't think it's fake just because of the because of like I said, reading the room. He doesn't seem like the personality to do videos like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he wasn't like. But yeah. I'm saying for her, from her perspective, like yeah. she she had to have planned that because yeah. I, I don't see how you would like or get yeah. on there and put mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. On social media nowadays, it's, it's crazy, suspect, but... man. I don't know. But well, this is what I gotta deal with in my dating. Oh my, you're lucky really that you got know. tied. I said, what was it? Nineties? Was it early now or two thousand? No, I was in the nineties. It was the late nineties. Sounds Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, uh, you 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 millennials, um, mm -hmm. or no, I should say you um, Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I know y'all ain't thinking about marriage, but uh, if you gonna get married, get married young. Mm -hmm. Get married young. Give yourself some time to grow together, learn together, make mistakes together. You know what I'm saying? But don't don't make mistakes in the terms of like infidelity. But I'm saying, you know, you're gonna go through financial struggles. You're gonna go through a lot of things in life. Give you a, a chance. Uh, give yourself a chance to. Go through those things together because that will increase your bond. Yeah, one hundred percent is going to increase your bond. And I think people that that get married young usually do stay married for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's people that get married in their thirties and forties where you a lot more. I want to say thirties, but maybe in your forties and above. You know, mm -hmm. you a lot more set in your ways. Yeah, you experience. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, much. you and you've been independent for so long. Yeah, like you, you, you like. Well, I could just go back to being independent. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I, I do agree that, well, the more experience you have, the less that you're going to be able to pair bond with someone, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just like if the younger you are and stuff like that. But then a lot of people will look at it. Well, you're young. You don't know nothing. And then you never got experienced life. Like, for example, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're perfect. Thing. You you never mm -hmm. got to go to the clubs and that. And then you feel like once you're 25 or 30, like, well, I want to live free. I've just been so tied down as a kid. I never had mm -hmm. fun. And I think if that's your personality, don't get married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real, hundred percent. If that's your personality, and you want a club, and you can't wait till you're twenty one and do. It, I was never like that, so that's just me. I'm just I was different in that way. I was mm -hmm. never like that. So, well, you got lucky to find someone that was also the same way though, because what yeah, if she's yeah. like that, you know? Man, that's a big deal. That's mm -hmm. a big deal too. But see, I think that off is flushed out in the conversations that you have before you get to that point. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like if you just meeting and it's on some physical, you just never get to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. But if you meeting and it's all like. Lots of long conversations before y'all get to the physical. That's so helpful. Mm -hmm. That 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 show. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the show where they meet? Uh, blind love. Love is blind. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that mm -hmm. show. Love is blind. That's a great concept yeah. because you do you fall in love just through those conversations. Now the problem is yeah. when you see them. Yeah, if it don't float your boat, boy, yeah. I'm telling you, the two got to go together. Yeah, These people to. talk about. Yeah. It grows. Mm -mm. I'm not seeing the growth. Yeah. I ain't seen one relationship where they said, y'all y'all comment down below if y'all found one, but I ain't seen one relationship where they say it'll grow and I and it actually grew. Yeah. Nah, I don't mm -hmm. see that. I feel like for men, physical attraction is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I know it's probably the same thing for women, yeah. but physical attraction for men is 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 a big deal. Um, yeah, we like your personality and all that other stuff, but like mm -hmm. men are sight oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanna 
we want to see uh, certain aspects that meet mm. what we feel. I like think actually pleasing. women are more willing to date. Uh, if you have, if a man has a great personality, more willing to date ugly versus a guy. Hundred percent is was humor. Yeah, humor's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like if you if you're a woman and you like a man that's just funny. Mm-hmm. He can look all kinds of ways. As long as he's funny, yeah. make you laugh and all that stuff. And he got mm-hmm. a good job and he can support, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, those are like regular women. Mm-hmm. They didn't yeah. I say that. I say that like <laughs> regular women, they don't uh, care. Like yeah. But they some mm-hmm. is like they gotta have a six figure job yeah. and they gotta yeah. do all that. You got my your day, list. My generation to dating. Uh, that list, man. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you do it. But I'm glad I got to have a video with you. We haven't done one in years. Oh, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. I had it's a good, good talk. Though. But what I was gonna say, well, they can't find you in nowhere, huh? Yeah, no, you can't find me. And well, where can they purpose. Where, where can they shop at? For all, right, all right, all right. So mm-hmm. you can shop for the products. That's that smack delicious sauce. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get it on eBay.com. Mm-hmm. You can get it on Walmart.com. You can get it on TikTok. You can get it on Facebook. You can get it on mm-hmm. Instagram. Listen, they're coming soon. You're gonna be able to get it in the stores. That's where we at, y'all. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah, definitely go on there. Oh, beloveslife.com. That's like the main place to go. You're gonna get the best um you're gonna get the best prices mm-hmm. on belovelife.com. And guys, make sure you follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. All is Eddie Chunchuck. That is Z-A-D-D-Y-C-H-U-N-K-C-H-U-N-K. But Z-C-C family, as we all know, the, the grind, grind never stops until the Z-C-C gang is on top. Let's get it!